also think genomics in mm. the healthcare space. Uh, we, for the first time, thanks to DNA sequencing, again, costs have come down low enough, DNA sequencing is going to introduce science into healthcare decision-making for the first time. We can honestly say that uh, until now, uh, more than half of all healthcare decisions were in some part made through guesses or experiences. Now we're gonna have the data. What has mutated in your genomic profile? What, what in the six billion bits of code in your genome, mm. what's gone wrong? It's like a needle in the haystack. What's gone wrong? For the first time, we'll be able to identify exactly what's gone wrong. And with CRISPR and other gene editing technologies and gene therapy, along with artificial intelligence. So it's this convergence of DNA sequencing, right. artificial intelligence, and, and gene editing. We're going to be able to cure diseases that we never thought mm. it would be possible to cure, including cancer. Certainly, wow. we'll be able to discover cancer in stage run one. Uh, a lot of companies uh, in Vite, Exact Sciences, uh, are helping us do that. And if we're able to discover where the mutations are, now the technologies are coming along that we'll be able to cure them. Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. I previously said that the three areas that I'm most interested in investing in are genomics, 5G, and artificial intelligence. Today I want to talk about one of the companies in the genomics arena, and that is Exact Sciences. If we look on the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF, we'll see that Exact Sciences is the number two company in this ETF in terms of weight. Of course, number one is Teladoc, which I've previously discussed in two different videos, and I encourage you to go back and watch those as well. I want to tell you why I think Exact Sciences is a fantastic company to think about investing in. I have already invested in it. We're going to talk about what Exact Sciences is currently doing, what they have coming in the pipeline, and we'll talk about whether this stock is a good time to buy right now in relation to its price to sales. Now, you may not be familiar with Exact Sciences, but if you watch television in the United States, you have probably seen this little cartoon box. Uh, this is the Cologuard commercial, and the Cologuard is... Cologuard is a product by Exact Sciences that is used to screen for colon cancer. It looks for abnormal DNA within a patient's stool. Now, this can be done within the privacy of your home, and during a pandemic, this is particularly useful. The box is shipped by the company to the patient's home. It comes with a canister to collect a stool sample as well as a bottle of reagent. When it's all collected, the patient then just ships this back to the company and then they are processed within their special lab. Now the thing to know about this test is that it is very sensitive. 94% in early stage cancers. That means 94 out of 100 people who actually have an early stage colon cancer, this test will detect it. It's 92% overall sensitivity for all colon cancers. The other important thing to know is that it's 87% specific. That means that 87% of people who receive a negative test do in fact not have colon cancer. Now one thing to know is how does this compare to other methods of screening for colon cancer? Over here on the left we have colonoscopy with a 95% sensitivity. And if we compare that to the fecal immunochemical test DNA, performed every year. We're looking at 92.3% sensitivity, so very similar. The company is currently working on Cologuard 2.0. They're hoping to maintain that 92% sensitivity rate, but they'd like to decrease the false positives by 30%. Now, while they're doing the studies for Cologuard 2.0, they're also testing a blood test for colon cancer. So they will have 10,000 patients in the study. They will collect a stool sample as well as a blood sample and then use that to see whether the blood test also has a good sensitivity and specificity. So currently this is what it's like to get a colonoscopy. Of course there's a bowel prep that goes on for this a couple of days before as well as some enemas and then of course the scope that's inserted into the bowel all the way uh, to the proximal large bowel. 
This also requires some sedation in order to do this, which essentially means a whole day off of work. So now if this colon cancer testing can be done in the future with just a blood draw, uh, imagine how many patients are gonna wanna opt for that. Their cancer screening actually did very well during the pandemic. Now, just comparing 2019, their revenue was 876 million, 2021.49 billion, and of that 1.49 billion, more than 800 million of it was related to cancer screening. For 2021, they're anticipating that that will go up to 1.1 billion just for cancer screening. Now, the company is also working on being able to do multi-cancer screening. Of course, they state that 3% of people over age 50 have cancer, and there are almost 10 million deaths annually uh, due to cancer. In their Detect A study results, they had 10,000 patients who were studied prospectively. 26 cancers were found across 10 organs, and 65% of the cancers that were detected were in an early stage. Now, this is also exciting. The company is working on a product that they're calling OncoGuard Liver. This is to screen patients for hepatocellular carcinoma, which is liver cancer. Liver cancer is actually the fastest growing cause of cancer-related death in the United States, and it's expected after 2035 to surpass colorectal cancer and breast cancer to be the third leading cause of cancer-related death. There can be many reasons for this. Uh, two in particular is hepatitis C, which is known as the silent killer. Usually uh, patients do not know that they're infected with that, and oftentimes it presents late as liver cancer. Another reason can be the epidemic, essentially, of fatty liver, which I've discussed a company called Endra, uh, who is making a particular probe that can be attached to an ultrasound machine to help quantify fat within the liver for treatment. I'd encourage you to go and watch that video as well. Now, there are a couple of ways of trying to screen for liver cancer. Uh, usually that's done with imaging as well as a blood test called an alpha protein or AFP. Doing that imaging and the blood test is about 63% sensitive, meaning 63 out of 100 people who have hepatocellular carcinoma, this particular type of liver cancer, uh, would be discovered using this screening. Now, their OncoGuard liver test has an 87% specificity. Again, specificity tells you that if you get a negative test, that it really is negative. So 87 out of 100 people who get a negative test will not have liver cancer. And it has 82% sensitivity, um, meaning 82 out of 100 people who have liver cancer, the test will discover it. When it gets to late stage liver cancer, which generally you don't want to have, it's more difficult to treat, it will discover 94% of those. Now, one other great thing about this company is that they're also working on precision oncology. What am I talking about with this? They have a product that they're calling Oncotype DX, which provides prognostic and therapy information as well. How does this work? Well, let's take breast cancer as an example. So one in eight women will develop breast cancer. That's about 280,000 cases per year in the United States. Now, the thing to know about this is that some women will not be responsive to chemotherapy. They get no benefit from it. Meanwhile, there are many women who will need chemotherapy. So women may be overtreated or undertreated depending on whether they do or don't receive chemotherapy. So the company performed a study called Taylor RX. It had 10,000 women, and they studied them for nine years. Now, the results of that Taylor RX study showed that if a patient received a score of 0 to 25, they were not likely to benefit from chemotherapy, whereas if they had a higher score, they were likely to benefit from chemotherapy. Imagine what a game changer that is for a woman to have some idea whether she will or will not benefit from chemotherapy from the start of her treatment. Now, they're doing similar things for other types of cancer. For instance, prostate cancer, they have a test that will help a patient and their provider decide whether they need immediate treatment or whether they can opt for active surveillance. When I was in medical school, we used to say that patients die with their prostate cancer rather than from it, but obviously there are some patients who will die from it and can benefit from immediate treatment. They have tests that will help predict recurrence of colon cancer as well as recurrence of breast cancer.
So these are just some of the reasons why I think this company is going to do very well in the near future and out into the distant future. This company has been making multiple acquisitions within the last few years, including several this year. Each of these acquisitions have been adding important capabilities to detect cancer as well as make predictions regarding treatment and recurrence rates. Now I want to just finish up by looking at how the financials are doing as well as discussing the current price to sales ratio. Just comparing Q2 2020 to 2021, we'll see that they had a significant increase in their revenue. We'll also see that they had a significant increase in their losses, but they have plenty of cash on hand. Now when companies are not making money, one way of trying to value them is to use the price to sales ratio. So this is a graph of the price to sales ratio as well as the stock price for exact sciences over the past three years. What we see here is that the price to sales ratio has been trending downward. Of course the stock price had been trending upward but the sales uh, per year have also been trending upward nicely. What does this mean? Well currently the price to sales ratio is about 8.7. Now a really good price to sales ratio is between one and two and anything less than one is excellent. So this tells us that this company is not cheap. You certainly are paying a bit of a premium at a price to sales ratio of 8.7. But if we back up just a few years to September of 2018, we'll see that the price to sales ratio was significantly higher at almost 24. So in comparison to the past, this company is at a bit of a bargain here in relation to price to sales. So I've given you a quick overview of exact sciences. It's important for you to know that their multi-cancer screening is about a $25 billion potential market, colon cancer screening about an $18 billion market, and minimal residual disease and recurrence monitoring about a $15 billion market. While this company is not the only company in the genomic sector performing these important functions, they certainly are one of the leaders, and their Kolagard test is really going to be leading the way here. Now, the next company we'll be talking about in the genomic revolution here is Pacific Biosciences. I've already discussed Teladoc in two previous videos, and you can see those here. Until next time, enjoy your investing.